Hello, thank you very much for the invitation. In fact, to be perfectly honest, I invited myself <laughs> to come to see the course of Jordan <coughs> because I want to understand further sheets that are like the origin of organ by modules, but I, the geometry part I know very, very little, so I just will explain what I know in the algebraic part. So,
in positive characteristic, when the field defined, I will define for the y model in the symmetric group case, he proved that uh, in positive characteristic, so if p is bigger than n, and you have that the analog of Sorgel's conjecture is equivalent to a part of the sticks conjecture. Namely, when these guys, they are near, the, they, are, they are around the Steinberg way. So it's like a, a little part of the stick conjecture. <coughs> the analog sort of conjecture for SM, for the symmetric group. That is the case that I will explain. Okay, and then in the last some time ago, in the year thirteen, Jordi proved that the analog Sorgen conjecture is false. And so he proves it. So, just, so this is P and this is N, and I am always looking in the SLN, the characteristic and the N of SLN. So Lustig conjecture was for P bigger than N. And Jordi proved that Sorgel conjecture is false here. So he in particular finds counterexamples and uh, it seems to grow exponentially. And you know like at least that it's bigger than some n log n, I don't know what, but it's n log n. Okay, so that for the quick summary of what happened. And now we have... Sorry, what, what, what is this graph that you have? Uh, so I'm explaining just what, what is... So Lustig conjecture uh -huh. for P bigger than N. And this is the graph of what George is... No, but non-linear field. What is it? Oops. This okay. part uh -huh. is where the circle conjecture is no. called. But what is this function? Oh, we don't know. Well, like, notice now that it's at least exponential. Oh, we know. Yes. Okay. So at least exponential. So there is no function. Is there? At least it, there is something smooth in the world. Well, well, it's a, it's at least um, c to the n for some c which is bigger than one, which is something like one point two five at least. But. I mean that one for that factor that's exponential one should include uh, McNamara and Kontorovich. Okay. <coughs> so what are sorgal bimodules? So you have this symmetric group acts on K is a field and acts on the screen. So R is that rate in a natural way. So you define BY as the following bimodule R tensor RS uh, uh, RSY R. Um, and so this is a, this is so R S Y is S Y is is the simple reflection Y Y plus one. And so this acts in R. And so this is the invariant subspace. So this is a this is an R R by module. You can act by R in the right or in the left, and it's graded because R is straight. 
So you just define the shift. So if you have done a, a, an object that is graded, you can define, define the shift such that in degree y is m n plus y. So you shift this thing. So that's what you will be allowed to do in sorgal by modules. So sorgal by modules are these kind of guys. B Y1 tensor over R B Y2 tensor over R B Y R R. This again is a bimodule that is Z graded. I will just call this B Y1, B Y2, B Y R. When I don't put anything, it's tensor over R. And so these are sorgal bimodules. Also, when you shift them by something, also will be sorgal bimodules, the direct sum summons of this. So direct summons. And direct sums of this, of direct summons. Not sorgal bimodules. All but some of some bimodules. This one. Tensor products of B Y. And uh, so I will define W of B Y1, B Y R just as the element that it represents. So it's S Y R S Y R. Okay, that's the definition of W of all but some of with the element in the symmetric group that represents this, this guy. So we have a theorem. Consider um, ES1 and ES2 There is a combinatorial set. I will explain what this means. module, as if you look at it as an R module in the right, it's free. And so you can construct essentially this basis that it's combinatorial in the sense that you give me, uh, that you can put it in a, into a computer, essentially. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an algorithm to calculate it. So you give me these two guys and I give you the exact basis. If the dot sum sums are very, very big, I will take a very much amount of time to tell you. 
maybe forever. So why there are they called double leaves? Because just a, a little exp explanation. It's because you construct there is there are trees that are involved here. So you construct something like you start with your botsamos and you construct a tree. But it's a morphism to another botsamos. And it's a, a tree like this. Botsamosum. Other botsamosum. And at the end, you finish by some botsamosum. You have 2 to the power of, of n botsamosum, so where n is the length of this word. Okay, so the depth, every time you have 2, 2, two 4, 8, blah, blah, at the end you have 2 to the power of n, n being the length of the botsamosum. And you, and you consider f b as 2, and you do the same process, procedure. These are morphisms between sorghum biology. So when you take a leaf, a leaf is associated with one morphism from here to this possumosum. That is the composition. There is only one. That's the good thing about trees. There is only one way to go from there to there. Well, I guess there are other good things about trees. But this is a good one. And so you can associate to a leaf um, a morphism. And then the thing is that you do the same here. This might be a little tree. And then, in some way, this basis is just putting this tree upside down and then like gluing them in some way, like in all possible ways. So, but everything is very, very explicit. It's step, I mean, it's very explicit, so you can in principle calculate everything. And we will call this, this one in particular, say that this one, I call this BS, uh, BS3. So we call this leaf a leaf from BS1 to W of BS3. Okay? W of BS, I recall, is the is the is an element in the in the symmetric group. A leaf from a botsamoson to, to a to an element. Of the symmetric. So, if L and L prime are degrees so the, the, are degree zero, uh, leaves from Gives one to x to distance um, you can you can define this BS1 goes through L to B uh, to BSX, let's call BSX the associated so to X I associate BSX. And then in this category you have the adjoint. So to every morphism in that direction, you have an adjoint morphism in that direction. So you can adjoint, you can consider the, so you have a morphism to here, you have another morphism to here, and you can consider the adjoint morphism that is going the, the river downwards, like a salmon. So this is LA, and you have BS1. And so you have that here, you can consider, in a hot also you have that it's a tensor product of guys like R tensor RS, R tensor RT, R. There is one element that is the one tensor, one tensor, one. It's the lowest degree element. This is a de these are degree zero maps. So, and the adjoint is also degree zero. So you have that one tensor, one tensor, one goes to something that I will call lambda L, L prime, one tensor, one tensor, one. This is a dimension one space. So it, it, this has to be like this. The interesting thing is that this belongs to Z. Because if you want to be able to, doesn't it go from BSX to BS1 back to BSX? Ooh. Completely. 
okay. So, um, so X is the element SI1, SIR you started with. What is X? Is the element associated to BS1? The, so you have you start with that with, with BS1, it goes to some peaks. It's a leaf, you, you take a leaf, okay. a degree zero leaf that ends in someone. I call this someone peaks. So you have a theorem. Uh, can have different degrees. But if there is only one degree zero, then the positive characteristic analog of Sorrell's conjecture is false. So I, I write the positive characteristic analog of Sorrel conjecture because he never conjectured this. Some people call it some people conjecture, but it's he conjectured it in characteristic zero. So the positive characteristic analog of Sorrel's conjecture is false uh, for primes p dividing lambda l l. Could you remind me what is the degree of a loop? So, so it's just, they're, they're graded morphisms. So this is a graded object, uh -huh. it goes to a graded okay. object, so you see just what the degree zero where it goes. That's the degree mm -hmm. of, a, of a map. Just explaining the way in which Jordi found, found at least the first counterexample. So, okay, so Lustig conjecture is false, but then you might want to know what happens anyway, like the problem stays. Category. So I'm lying because uh, 
Essentially, what they do here is they define this diagrammatic category, so they they can define a category that it's equivalent to sorted by modules when sorted by modules exist and are well defined and, and satisfy the good properties, but it's defined in always over Z. So you can reduce mod P, and so here you have your algebraic group, and then then you have this equivalence when here circle by modules is not what I said, it's circle by modules over the affine value. So I define it only for the for the symmetric group. So the idea here is that why why so there is this Routier's uh, philosophy. He was the one that was interested, at least in my experience, for defining this category by generators and relations so to, to produce a diagrammatic category. And so he had this idea of that if you have you made circle by module fact in some category, so you will have a lot of information. And so part of this, ah, well, so this is uh, almost proven in type A by Jordan Simon. And, um, or maybe pro, like, we are close to, <laughs> you are close to, <laughs> to prove it. And uh, so the thing is that they first make this category act in uh, this category. And then with some analog of, of uh, what was Rukier, one of Rukier, Rukier's conjecture, that now is a theorem, by me and, uh, and Jordi, that it's essentially the, the annihilation of some of some standard and co-standard modules in the homotopy category. This implies this isomorphism. So the thing is that essentially we we come back to the question of understanding. If this is true, if we suppose that this conjecture, as I suppose, that it will be proven soon, you are interested in knowing how both Saddlesons are decomposed in different characteristics. So that will be that will answer essentially the problems in, in representation theory. So the problem is that you have to understand intersection forms. So let L1, LR be the leaps from BS, BS to X. So you can consider the matrix lambda L1, L1 Lambda L1 LR, Lambda LR L1, Lambda LR LR. And so when when this matrix in certain characteristics change rank, you will have that this bot Samuelson will decompose in a different way than in characteristic zero. And so you might be interested in trying to calculate this stuff and, and the ranks and stuff like this. But this seems to be a very hard problem. But this is the kind of problem that I've tried to solve or to understand in the last year. That's why I have like, essentially nothing to say. So, direct approach. Trying to calculate everything. There is one problem that I did not say. Is that light leaves or uh, uh, these, these things here, the leaves, they are not really. I, I don't want to say well defined because you you need to do some choices. With any choice that you do, this will give a basis. 
it's quite strange. You have millions of choices, and with any choice, you, put, you have a basis. But, but with different choices, you will have different, different uh, elements. And so it's, <coughs> it's not necessarily clear. Uh, at the end, the rank will change the same. But like, you would like to have like one that is a particular. So this is a problem we tried to solve with Jordi in January. And we, can, we are able to solve it essentially for the symmetric group and for other groups, but not for all groups. It seems not to be <coughs> trivial to, 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 to define this canonically. So there, that's one step in the calculation of this, like to have things that are well defined in the, in the coordinates. And then there is an, an important thing that A and Williamson did is they gave a formula in the new Hecke algebra. For some some uh, leaves. So, so some special leaves that I would like to say they are the, the easiest, or not the easiest, but they, they are this a beautiful result, and this is in part what, what made Jordi able to to find the counterexamples. But but like the thing that is missing, it seems really hard. So I, to find a complete formula for every couple of light leaves. It's a challenge. And three, our professor here was able to calculate with the with the computer everything until eight nine. So <coughs> he has calculated all this stuff. So this gives some ideas of what could happen. Um, in general, but it's, it seems quite complicated. <coughs> I, I, I've been working a lot with Luis Arenas Carmona in Chile with, about this stuff, and we have lots of really little partial results that I will not explain because they are not powerful enough. But some kind of recursive formulas for bigger sets and stuff like that. But before I end, I, will, I would like to explain what I, what I decided today to call the path conjecture. But it's kind of related with all of this in some way. So it's, it's easy. So you have, you have great relations. No? S, Y, S, J is equal to S, J, S, Y if y minus j is bigger than bigger or equal than 2, yeah, in the symmetric group. And you also have the other great relation, sy, sy plus minus 1, sy, is equal to sy plus minus 1, sy, sy plus minus 1. These are called the great relations. And you have something that I, I like to consider the categorification of the great relations in circle by modules. So you have only one. But when you have this, when you're in this situation, you have exactly one morphism from B i, B y, B j to B j, B y that I will call F i j. There is only one that satisfies that it's a degree zero morphism, modulo scalar, scalar. So this is essentially well defined. And the same for the other case. So you have that there is only one from here to here. Then we'll call by y, y plus one. Essentially, there is only one that has to be zero. So whenever you have a <coughs> 
a break relation in the in the symmetric group, you can associate a morphism between both sums. So um, imagine you have S1, S2, S4, S5, S4, S3. And you apply a break relation, and it goes to S1, S2, S5, S4, S5, S3. And then apply the break relation there. So I can associate a morphism between circle bundles, that is B1, B2, B4, B5, B4, B3 goes to B1, B2, B5, B4, B5, B3. Just as you would imagine. Essentially here, it's the identity. Tensor F45, tensor the identity here. So you just apply F45 here. So what I'm trying to say is that whenever you have um, a break relation, you will have a morphism between the corresponding bot samples on by one. So consider x an element of w. Now I will say w a coxeter system. So all of this is defined for coxeters, general coxeter systems. So you consider red, red X is not the red elements in X, they are the reduced elements. So the vertices are the reduced expressions and the arrows, and so you have an arrow between two reduced expressions only if they differ by one regulation. Okay? just mention two results with respect to this. This is something that has kind of obsessed me for many years. So I have a result, I think from 2010, that says that <coughs> if W is a very strange group, is extra large, and this means that for the people that know what a coxular system is, that the defining numbers defining the coxular system are all bigger than three, but they are very special. In fact, they are not so special. Right? The symmetric group is very special, but well. Anyway, so if W is like this. Or bigger equal to what? What did you write? MSR bigger than three. Okay. So X belongs to W. And P is a path passing through every vertex of red X. Oh, I didn't say. When you have a path here, here, so you have this graph, I don't know, and then uh, you have a path, then you have an associated, as I explained here, you have an associated path, of mo mo uh, an associated mo morphism between both samples of my model. So if, if you have a path, a closed path, You can associate um, f of p, that will be the, the associated f morphism that belongs to the endomorphism <coughs> of the, the associated box amazon. So you start here, you do a, a closed path, and this is associated to a box amazon. And you will have a morphism 
from this morphology to itself, to himself. So this will, I will call FP. So you, you start with a path, a closed path. There is a closed path passing through every vertex of this. Then FP is an item token. Well, this is interesting because essentially you have that the image of this item potent it's inside this bot Samuelson that I say. That is, so you start from a bot Samuelson, you have an item potent, the item potent, the image, it's inside it and contains the X, where X is W of the S. So this bot Samuelson represents an element. And it has like the biggest in the composable inside of it, this, this Bx. And so it's this kind of some, this gives like a basis of the Heck algebra that is intermediate between like the two more known bases. So that's why I was interested in, in, in finding this idempotent. And I missed the point of what, what I was doing. I just realized now, four years later, And there is a theorem from Elias, 2022, that if W is in SN, W in SN, let W is the symmetric group, um, and X is the longest element. And P belongs to some specific uh, set of paths then seems very specific, like you have to choose one element in the symmetry group and one specific path, but the proof is like very, very long, like 30 pages, very beautiful, with lots of ideas and he essentially uses diagrams, only diagrams, the, the, the diagrams that he first uh, did with Hovanov and then in general with Jordi. And, uh, and so it's like super complicated proof just for this. And now I will just to finish, I will just try to, I will say what is my top conjecture. If W is any Coxeter system, In W, P and P prime, two closed paths, passing through every vertex. the most deep reason why something is an item potent. Because every path that starts from a point and comes back and passes through everyone, every vertex, is the same morphism in the, in the categorical level, if this is true. So of course, it's an item potent, because if you compose it with itself, it's just another path passing through every node. And like this is just very crazy for me because 
Why, why I believe it's true now? Because I tested it in random places using uh, aleatory, uh, aleatory paths. And, uh, and in many, like in many, like 20 cases, I've seen that it's true. I re-saw, I re-read my paper, <laughs> this one, and I realized that I proved that it's unique. It's, it was stupid too, because I was just interested in, in an item border, and in fact it's unique. So in that case, it's, it's true. In the symmetric group case, it seems to be true. And it would be just extremely fantastic for me, but it's like, it was too wild to believe, for me, some time ago, to believe that this could be true, but now it seems reasonable. I say it's a conjecture, I, don't, I, I maybe don't have enough like, reasons to believe that this is true, but... Well, that's all. Thank you. So, any question? So you don't conjecture that this idea product gives a zone. Oh, no, no. I, in fact, I conjecture they are, well, I conjecture. I believe that they are, like before I was doing this because I thought it was going to give you essentially most, always the in the composable. That was the original motivation. But now I believe they are extremely far from giving, giving you the in the composable. They are essentially, in some way, the least the more far you can be. Like I believe in some way there is a kind of universal property of this kind. That, it, that, that essentially you take out essentially what you have to take out. And all the core that it's related between like something that is like the highest and the lowest, what's that also? They have like, like the intersection is what stays. And the intersection in general is kind of big. So yeah, the original motivations was to prove uh, for good conjecture or to approach it in some way, but now I see that it's like it's much more beautiful if it's true than what I believe, but it's much farther from proving anything than what I thought in the beginning. And also that we know examples where it's not. It's not. Oh yeah, you know lots of examples where it's not true. 